Hello, this is the third video in a series I'm calling Transformations of Random Variables. And in this video, we're going to look at the change of variable technique in the univariate setting. And this is my generic picture of what happens in variable transformation. That we have a random variable in its domain, S, and there's a function that maps sets, call it A, to sets B in this domain. Uh, uh, t and so y is equal to h of x um, and there's also an inverse image now this has to be a function this does not have to be a function because so several variables here can map to the to one variable here and so the inverse image is not a function because it goes from one to many but it's still the inverse image saying which variables here are mapped to this one and that becomes important in variable transformation now when you assume it's one a one-to-one -one transformation then the inverse image you can call it an inverse function because one element goes to one element and vice versa so here in the theorem we're going to let x be a random variable have a continuous pdf f of x except possibly on a finitely many x's Let's let the uh, y equal h of x, it's a function, be a measurable one-to-one -one transformation. Um, measurable just means sets, I'm being vague here, sets here behave with sets here and vice versa. I have a video on probability measures if you want to search that and get a better understanding of what measurable means. But for now we can just think of it as a one-to-one -one function or transformation going from s to t um, so that means for every y in t there exists an x so you know um, that is mapped to y and you can express it like this that the inverse function of y is x and uh, h of x is equal to y so let's assume that the inverse function is differentiable and continuous on t and then the and we want to find the, the PDF f of y of the random variable y. It's given by this. Um, so f of y is, is derived from f of x, where you plug in the inverse function, and you take it times the Jacobian, which is the derivative of your inverse function. Um, a quick proof, I'm going to call it a sketch. So let's let b be a set in t. And then... Uh, the set A has a pre-image of, of uh, B. Then we want to find the probability that Y is in B. But remember, Y is a function of X. So that's the same as the probability of, the, of H of X is in B. But then this is equivalent to um, the probability that X is in A. Um, now, because X has to be an A and then map to B for these two to, two to happen. Now, this next step, you, you'll, you, it's critical to understand, but it's, it's, we've been doing it and it's pretty obvious. So the probability that X is in A means you take the density or the, you know, the distribution of X and integrate it over the region A, you know, the set A, okay? Well, Okay, so remember that. So now let's do a variable transformation on this. Standard calculus or real analysis. We're going to let x be the inverse function of y. And then when you back solve, you get y equals h of x. And then the derivative of x with respect to this is this. So now let's plug this information in here. x is here. You have to take it times the Jacobian, which is this. And now the limits of integration, um, when x is a, you stick it in there. Well, the h of a maps it to b. So we're integrating over b. Now this next step, and, and so and we're actually done. You say, well, well, that's it. This is the PDF of y. And then you go, you know, a lot of people say, well, what? That doesn't make sense. But then if you think about this step here, the probability that x is in A, you take the density of x and integrate it over the region A. Well, that's what we're doing here. So we have the probability that y is in B. So you take the density of y and integrate it over B. So th that's it. So this is the density of, of f of y. And we're finished. 
So let's look at a quick example. So we have, let's let x be normal mu sigma squared, and here's, then this is the PDF of it. And we're going to have a linear transformation, um, ax plus b, where a and b are real. Uh, h is 1 to 1 in this case. Uh, and let's find f of y. So um, let's, the, to back solve for x right here, we get this. So x is equal to the inverse function of h, you know, or of y, which is, which is this. And then we take the derivative of this with respect to y, we get 1 over a. Now this is part of the Jacobian. So f of y you stick is f of x, but then you stick in this to the function and take it times the absolute value of the Jacobian. And then uh, when you plug in this for x, you get this. Okay. Now this 1 over a, we're going to take outside this squared. So, so it becomes 1 over a squared. But to take it out of this, you also have to multiply this by a. Because when you bring it back in, you want it to cancel and you leave mu of a. And then the a squared comes down. And that's what we do in this step. Um, and we also take this minus b and put it in here. And we get this. And so the Jacobian is here. Uh, it's y minus this, uh, minus 1 over 2 times a squared mu squared. Well, this here is the density of a normal distribution with mean a mu plus b and variance a squared sigma squared. And so that's the, the PDF of y. Okay. Um, well, in our theorem, we assumed h is 1 to 1. But what do we do if it's not 1 to 1? Um, well, one, of, one thing we do is we break it into regions where h is 1 to 1. Okay, so let's look at some examples before we state the next theorem. So example 1, y equals x squared. Here's the function. And, you know, it is a function. It passed the vertical test, but it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So it's not a 1 to 1 function. But this here represents the domain S. So what we do is we find a partition of S, which means that the, uh, these subsets are disjoint. They don't overlap. And when you take the union, they, you get S back. Okay, that's, that's step one. And so we've done that. And if you look at region one, S1, that is a one-to-one -one function. It passes both the horizontal and ver vertical line test. And here's S2. Now, once you find the partition, you observe the, the regions for T. So T1 is this region, you know, because we're here, and T2 is this region. So they happen to be the same, okay? So, so now let's look at this one. Let's look at uh, this uh, function here, which then is this function, so which is clearly not one-to-one -one because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, passes the vertical test, so it is a function. Now let's break up this region S into, to, or let's partition it. And so we're going to partition it right here, right here, because then that's a one-to-one -one function. We can partition it here, because that's a one-to-one -one function. We can partition, you know, this. Now we observe the regions T1, which is which is this. So it goes from this point down. That's T1. T2 um, is, is just, you know, this region here. And then S1 is this region, or T1 is, T3 is this region here. Okay, so why do we break it up into that? Well, because, let's, let's say we're trying to find the probability that Y is this. Well, we need to find the pro to find the probability that y is this value right there on the graph. Then that's equal to the probability that x is this, and the probability that x is that value. And over here, if we pick a high value, the probability that y is that is the probability that x equals this value. But we're in say this region, then the probability that that y equals that value is actually the probability that x is this, or x is that, or x is this. So you have to add them all together. 
And that's actually the next uh, theorem. But um, And showing those pictures, I think, makes this the, the nomenclature easier to understand. So let's let x be a random variable, continuous PDF, except for possibly finitely many x's. Let's have a, 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 a function h that maps from x to y or s to t. It'll be a measurable function. h is, you know, mapped from s to t. t and s are subsets of the real number line. We partition S into, say, R disjoint regions, and then the subsets TJ of T are associated with it, such that H is defined on each SJ onto TJ is one to one. Um, now let H be, HJ be a transformation of H restricted to that part, you know, that particular partition SJ, and SJ inverse be its inverse. For each of the uh, subsets, um, assume HJ1 is differentiable and continuous on TJ, then the PDF of Y is given by this function here. So what this is saying is for a given Y, oh, so um, it's, it's this sum, but we have an indicator function that's 1 or 0 if, it's, if Y is in that particular uh, subset, TJ. So what it says is we're going to add up all the probabilities of y um, where y is in a particular subset of tj. That's what this says. Um, and where this probability is the, the probability in the theorem that we just did, it's, it's uh, f of yj is equal to f of x where you plug in the inverse over that region times its uh, uh, absolute value of the Jacobian. So let's let's do a quick example to illustrate that. Okay, so here um, we let x be a standard normal, which then the PDF the func the PDF is this, and let's let y equal be x squared. So we're in that um, U shaped, and we want to find the density of f of y. So the regions are s1 is this, and s2 is this. And T1 and T2 become this. Remember, we pick a partition such that it makes a function one-to-one, -one, and then we just observe these where they happen to be. And then so um, note then the function over this region is minus square root of y, and then its derivative is this, and the function over this region is just the square root of y, which then its uh, derivative is this. Now, Remember, for any y that we pick, it's going to be in both of these regions. So we have to add the functions. We have to add the function to both, you know, of both of these regions here. So this, uh, the function over this region, so that's called uh, y1, f of y1, is equal to f of x, and then we plug in this inverse function times it, the absolute value of the Jacobian. Now the uh, density for this region is f of y2, uh, it's f of x, but we plug in this inverse here, take it times its Jacobian, So, um, which then when we plug in values, you know, we plug this in to the, uh, right here, so it's squared, but the square root of a, a, a square of a square root, you just get it back and the same over here. So those are the densities over each region. So then, then for any y that we pick, it's part it's part of t1 and t2. So we have to add those densities together. And then when we add these densities, which is adding these densities, um, we get this. So this is like a one half, and then everything's the same one half. This is the same as that. So it's just combining them, and we get this. And then this can be tricked, you know, 2 is 2 to the 1 half, uh, square root of pi is actually gamma of 1 half. If you raise the square root of y to the numerator, you can write it as 1 half minus 1, and then e to the y. Well, this right here is a chi squared with 1 degree of freedom. And, and actually that we knew, that if we square a standard normal, we get a chi square. And well, we just proved it using the change variable technique. Um, in an earlier video, we also showed it using the CDF method, too, that a square of a standard normal is chi-square. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. It's, the video's getting long. Um, 
If you liked it, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.